Hey guys, hope you are doing well. Welcome to the Heart Centered Millionaire. This is one of our mountain series where you guys can check out this show here just on the on the podcast, or if you want, you can actually check it out on YouTube where you can see a little bit of the video of everything going on. Me and Maya today, we're at the office here. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can get us a good view here, but I'm excited to dive into today's topic, which is the three pitching pitfalls that you guys don't want to make. We got a bit of a view of the mountains here and Maya's here with us. So I'm excited to dive into this because you guys know we're all about the heart-centered entrepreneur becoming business savvy. Now one part of, one part of the business that's really important for building an incredible business is pitching your service, is sending out proposals, is actually selling your service, right? And so what I want to go through, through to today basically is three different ways that you should not pitch your service. And the reason that I'm going to be talking about these is because I've been seeing so many people make these mistakes recently. And these three ways of trying to pitch your service are going to not work at all. And honestly are just a waste of your time. And so me and Mia here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive into today. So I got three different types of pitches. Now, before we get started into this mindset around selling is so important. And let me get this, let me get this really straight. To be super business savvy and heart centered, it doesn't mean that we don't do sales. A lot of people are scared to do sales because they're scared to basically take money from people or they're scared to come off as like salesy car man or whatever it is. They don't want to be aggressive, pushy or mean. And here's the beautiful thing about being a heart centered entrepreneur is that you can do sales in a way where you don't have to feel pushy, you don't have to feel aggressive, you don't have to feel like you're doing a disservice to the world. You can actually do sales in the way that you are completely serving the world to the best of your capabilities. And it comes down to a couple things, understanding that you're not here to sell something that's not good for someone. You're not here to sell something that's going to put this person out. You are basically giving them an opportunity to be served by you in a certain capacity. And so I always talk about is when you get on a call with someone, provide some value to them. And if you naturally see that there's an area where you can really provide service to them, offer it, okay? And so getting getting really good at sales is actually one of the most heart-centered things you can do because the world needs your gifts. The world needs to be like taught by you, coached by you, and served by you. But the only way to do that is to have an exchange of energy. They give money, you give coaching. That's the exchange of energy. And it's important to realize that the money is not a bad thing, right? The only way that you can go full-time helping more people is if you get paid well. And that's really important to understand because at the end of the day, so many people are charging so little or basically coaching people for free. But here's the thing, if you don't take care of yourself from a financial and stress standpoint, your coaching is not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good at all. So when you actually start to make enough money to live comfortably and have above and beyond your means, you're able to spend more time helping people. You do it from a place where you're less stressed, where you can spend more time learning about how to be a better coach. Money is actually going to allow you to have freedom to actually, at the end of the day, serve your clients and your community better, okay? So now let's dive into these three different pitching pitfalls that we can make sure that you're not doing so that you don't have to go ahead and uh, basically uh, make these mistakes. So I've, I come up with little acronyms and funny ways of saying all these. So the first pitch that I see that doesn't work well at all is what we call the pamphlet pitch. Now the pamphlet pitch is when you send this massive message, it's basically like 30 pages long, telling someone why they need your service, what the price is, how the, if they don't get your service, they're gonna go down the drain, and how you're the best person for the service with a link to your website and a link to pay. This is terrible and I see it all the time. People are pitching their service in this pamphleted way, which is so scripted and it's just sent out to so many people on a mass level. Now, maybe some of you don't do this one, but for those of you who have seen it happen or maybe you've been taught to do it, you gotta stop doing it because here's how you have to think about it. The person on the other end of the spectrum, the person who's reading your message, they're going to take one look at this massive pitch and their eyes are going to become a bit of a blur and they're going to delete the message or they're going to ignore it, right? Every time you send a message to someone or you pitch someone, basically they're either going to delete it, ignore it, or respond to it. 
And you want to be crafting your pitches and getting to the place with your pitches that people are actually responding to it, okay? So that's the first one that you don't want to do. You don't want to, you don't want to have this massive long pitch. Now, if you do want to send a detailed message to someone that's a little bit longer, there's some better ways to do it. I mean, email is a really great way to do it. Or if you're on social media, a couple, two, two tactical pieces of advice is either send a video message or a voice message. So it's a bit like you have space to actually talk through it and they actually know that you're intentional. It's not just copy and paste. Or if you are going to do it in a text format, break it up a little bit. One of the most natural ways to get more conversation going in your messenger is to break your messages into smaller chunks and send a couple of them rather than one long one. And so those are a couple, a couple little practical tips of um, basically advice that will help you have better conversations in Messenger, okay? So the first pitch that you want to avoid, the pitfall you don't want to do, don't do pamphlet pitches, okay? So the second type of pitch that I see quite often that honestly is just not going to work for you at all is what we call the piss on you pitch. This is where basically when someone pitches you, they're basically kind of like insulting you or saying how bad you're doing, how you need their service. And I have a lot of people doing this to me on a daily basis. They'll reach out to me and be like, hey, I don't think your content's up to par with what it could be doing. It could be doing a lot better. And even though they're trying to serve me, they're coming across as like, hey, you kind of suck. You need my help. And it's a really egotistical pitch. And I mean, to be completely honest, it's like putting a lot of negativity into your prospect's mind. And so don't go into a pitch at all belittling someone. Better way of approaching it if you think there are things that they could improve on is ask them questions, right? Hey, are you wanting to increase your engagement right now? Hey, with your content, how are, how are you enjoying it? Are you, are you having a hard time with enough time to create the content? Do you feel like you need more ideas? Like ask questions and then give advice when it's asked for. A lot of people don't want unsolicited advice and so don't piss on them while you're pitching. Really, really important principle here, okay? And at the end of the day, part of being heart-centered is that you're just a kind, caring person. Don't be mean. Don't be, don't be a jerk while you're having sales conversations. Be genuine. And once you're genuine, you're going to get rid of some of that egotistical, I'm better than you crap. And you're going to actually get to the place where you can actually serve them properly. Okay? So that's the second type of pitch that you want to avoid, the pitfall that you do not want to go into. And so now the third one, the third one's really important which is the premature pitch. This is when you pitch your services too soon. We, I, I, and this, I got taught this as, as a young online fitness coach, is basically like you need to message with people like three or four times without ever talking to them ever, and then pitch them to get on a sales call really, really fast. And I mean, some of you have heard me talk about it. It's kind of like the same thing like going on a date and basically after the first date being like, you know what, this went really, really well. I think it's time to like seal the deal. Let's get an engagement ring or will like, will you marry me? And at the end of the day, premature pitches don't work because your leads aren't warmed up enough. They don't know you well enough. They don't like you well enough yet. They don't trust you enough yet. And so this happens a lot. And what if, if you are doing premature pitches, you're getting a lot of people not responding, a lot of people just saying no, or you're getting sales calls, but they're so cold that you never close them. If that's happening in your business, you are premature pitching. You need to have what we call a warming mechanism that warms up these. They might be, they might be good leads, qualified leads, but they're not hot leads. There's a difference between a qualified lead and a hot lead. I could go find 100 qualified leads for my business today, but they're not warmed up to me yet. So you have to warm them up better. And that's why we really recommend you guys diving into things like creating value pieces, nurturing them better, hosting workshops, or having them in an email sequence that gets them to know you, share your stories, show more social proof of what you do that it's actually gonna work for them as well. Once you do that and you add a couple warming mechanisms in between qualified lead and sales call, then you can have your pitch at the right time. Because here's the thing, as much as I don't like to say this, basically you have one opportunity usually to pitch someone. Now, you, sometimes you can have follow up and pitch them again, but for majority of your leads, you kind of have one opportunity and you wanna make sure that it's at the right time, you've warmed them up enough, that you're not gonna do the pitching pamphlet, that you're not gonna do the piss on them pitching. You we wanna make sure their pitch is worded the right way, that the stuff that needed to happen before the pitch has happened, and that your lead is ready for you to pitch, okay? 
And so I hope that this episode was helpful for you guys. Now, if you want to actually get some more um, basically helpful information around how to be heart-centered in the sales. We actually did a training on that a couple of weeks ago. If you guys send me a message just saying, hey, I want the sales workshop, my team and I will get you connected to a training that's about 45 minutes long, where I walk through the entire sales process and how to be heart-centered on a sales call, okay? So if you guys are interested in that, again, send me a message. But I hope you guys found this little mountain series uh, helpful today. I wanted to obviously show you guys the mountains a little bit more. There you go. If you're on YouTube, you can see right now we got a lot of snow. Going to go snowboarding soon. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope to see you guys on again. I hope you guys do incredible. Go serve the world. Be heart-centered. Avoid these three pitching pitfalls. We'll check with you guys soon.